Uh, oops, Marina. Um, good to be here today. Um, okay, I feel like I need to begin by explaining that uh, not only is the paper you're about to hear not the one Wendy and I had planned to give when we first submitted our proposal back in May, but also just a couple of weeks ago, uh, it looked very much like we weren't going to be giving it at all. Um, going by our conference abstract, I guess what you'd be expecting today is that we'll be talking about uh, our experiences over the last few months of using this fancy new piece of digital technology, an interactive touch table for displaying heritage content, uh, that was purchased by our library back in July. Um, however, as we'll elaborate in a moment, um, the fact of the matter is that um, unfortunately, our table actually only ended up arriving last week. Uh, and not only that, uh, we still haven't managed to connect it up to our network, uh, and we still haven't received any training at all in how to use its content management system. So, now if you're thinking, hey, that sounds like a pretty flimsy basis for you guys to be up there telling us about your experiences using this device, well, yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, and that's why a few weeks back, uh, with great reluctance, uh, when we finally accepted this was the situation we were going to be in, I contacted NDF organizers to say, hey, sorry, but I feel like we've no choice but to withdraw our paper. Um, despite the very late uh, date of withdrawal, they were remarkably nice about it, uh, and I'm very appreciative of the way they handled what was, for me, a very awkward situation. However, uh, a couple weeks ago, they did end up getting back in touch with us to say, hey, look guys, we're still holding your slot open, maybe you'd like to reconsider. They made the point that NDF was just as interested in people discussing their failures, or thwarted endeavors, as they preferred to call them, uh, as their uh, successes. Now that's a sentiment both Wendy and I entirely agree with, and in fact, that's why we would included the possibility of stuffing things up in the title. Uh, but still, I have to say, I had been expecting we'd get the chance to uh, stuff things up in more productively informative ways than just waiting for the damn table to turn up. Uh, okay, but anyway, uh, after talking things over with Wendy, I eventually came around to the idea that, okay, maybe if we instead focus on things like the acquisition process, communication issues, the aspirations underpinning our project, we might, just might, be able to pull together something sufficiently engaging and informative enough to justify us presenting in a forum of this kind. Whether that was the right call or not, you're about to find out. Um, okay, so a bit of background about our project. For a number of years now, Upper Hutt City Library has been experimenting with uh, various digital and not, whoops. Okay. There we go, got it. I, I'm not the tech person, so Wendy has to tell me what to do. Uh, for a number of years now, Upper Hutt City Library has been experimenting with various digital and non-digital means of making our heritage collections more accessible in ways that engage our community and invite participation. So it's nice to follow on from the Southland Museum people were talking before. Uh, our first big step back in 2012 was to set up an online interactive digital archives using the Recollect platform. We were one of the uh, early users, pioneers users of this platform, which is now in widespread use across the glam sector in both New Zealand and Australia. Um, Recollect ha has been absolutely key to us uh, as a way of pursuing our core strategy of getting our archives out of the store into the community and also of, uh, here's an example, of leveraging our community's knowledge to improve the quality of the information we keep. Um, however, we also realized early on that a purely digital approach had limitations in terms of reaching all the areas of our community we wanted to in the ways that we wanted to. And so we began to supplement Recollect with other physically grounded forms of outreach, such as these events we called analog crowdsourcing events that were held in our library, and also, uh, more elaborately, these pop-up museums that we'd hold in places outside, like a shop on Main Street. Um, what both these had in common was that they were ways of representing our digitized content in a physical setting, while at the same time inviting users to in turn contribute to those digital collections uh, via things like you know, laptops and scanners that we would have on site so people could go and add directly to Recollect. Um, as you can see then, uh, we've endeavored, endeavored to take an integrative approach whereby we've tried to create feedback, feedback loops uh, between the physical and virtual spaces in which we operate 
treating these as complementary components of the same overall project. Last year, however, our manager, Marion Reed, identified a significant gap in this strategy, which was that so far we lacked any point of access within the physical confines of our library itself for users to engage with our virtual heritage content. Uh, Marion had recently had a conference in Australia where she'd seen a demonstration of a digital touch table, uh, and she now suggested that maybe we could purchase one of these as a way of displaying digital heritage content within our library in an interactive way. And of course, my reaction to that was, of course, cool, you know, fantastic. I mean, that's like the sort of fancy toy that normally only the big kids get to play with. So Marion ended up assigning Wendy and I to develop this project, and I ended up getting so excited about the prospect of working with a device like this that I thought, hey, why not give a paper at NDF? Um, <laughs> however, when it came to drafting the proposal, I, I, was, I did remain aware enough to realize that not only things might go wrong, that things might go wrong, uh, but also had a sense that one of the ways they might go wrong was this whole thing of being dazzled by the latest cool technology tool to come your way. And that's why in our proposal, I put in a line about the dangers of being seduced by the latest shiny technology. Um, now, Wendy's a super big romance novel fan, and so as, as soon as she saw that I put the word seduction uh, in our uh, proposal, uh, she was thrilled and insisted that we also had to have it in the title. And I guess having done so, we figured we may as well run with it. Uh, but yeah, when you think about it, cautionary tales of romantic seduction aren't that bad a metaphor for situations we sometimes find ourselves in. Uh, to give a personal example, uh, a few years back, I fell pretty hard for this rather beguiling and attractive uh, swivel head public access digital scanner. Um, I found myself really fantasizing, I found myself really taken by what I, I perceived as its appealing capacity for heritage outreach, and I couldn't help fantasizing about all the wonderful times we, go, we were going to have together engaging our community. Unfortunately, though, things didn't work out. Uh, I don't want to go into details, it's still pretty raw. But uh, basically, it was one of those situations where you know you excitedly rush into a relationship <laughs> without properly thinking things through. Like, how well did I know it really? Uh, were we actually a good fit together? And what if this turned out to be one of those high maintenance relationships you always hear about? Was I in any posi position to provide it with the kind of ongoing intention and support it might need? Anyway, having been all through all that uh, before, I was aware of what dangers it might be, but I thought this time surely things will be different. Wendy. Hey, just put that in there. Um, so obviously our project was to get a touchscreen table into the library um, and we succeeded. There was kissing and everyone lived happily ever after. Um, no. um, uh, we are going to go into my stuff now, which is, oh sorry, which is kind of boring but maybe kind of interesting. My slides are not nearly as good as Reed's take on romantic on romance books and I was so gutted when I saw them because I was like, oh man, um, and they're not nearly as romantically punny. Um, okay, so um, our manager has seen a touch screen um, at Alia that Reid mentioned um, in early 2018 and she really wanted us to get one. Um, Reid and I both had other things on our plate um, along with everyone else, else in our library as we were booted out of our building because of earthquake proneness. So it didn't, wasn't a priority for the library or us. Um, we had heaps of discussions though in the interim about what a touch screen tabletop would look could mean to our heritage services um, and our manager somehow turned it into a need and when all of the hubbub of moving the first time died down we were tasked with getting one for the library. Um, so I was asked to be the project leader because of my obvious technolo technology expertise and the fact that I'd just done a whole heap of basic work on project management internally. Um, Reid was chosen because he is Upper Heart Heritage and he knew the ins and outs of our collections and would obviously be a key part of the table once it arrived. Um, a few years before, we'd actually, our previous manager had actually asked us to look at touchscreen technology um, as an option for our library, but it just seemed so out of our league money-wise. Um, but like the poor little servant girl, who is unknowingly an heiress, lusting after a rakish duke. Um, once tasked this time round though, we managed to set up a demo with our vendor at around Christmas time, which is always the best time to conduct any type of business. Uh, we were shown how other institutions were using it and we were also familiar with some of the applications in New Zealand um, institutions. 
Um, they gave us some of the specs verbally and some of us are far worse note takers than we actually thought. <laughs> um, we were very wary of upcoming decisions about where our library was going to move to. There were several sites on the table, but um, shh. <laughs> oh, no. they're not nearly as good as reads. Um, we had to make sure that our table would be able to work in multiple spaces depending on where we um, finished up. So um, Reid and I whipped up a business plan, um, a business proposal, sorry, as was expected of us, um, both knowing that we were more than likely going to get the table. Um, seemed mildly futile, but it is of course very good practice. Management agreed to our proposal and we were advised that we would need to wait till July the 1st to purchase a table due to budgets. So the money came out of a big budget where money had been used some other way. Creative accounting <coughs> is excellent. Um, so in the meantime, while we were waiting for July the 1st to happen, we sorted out payment details and set up the vendor so that when July the 1st came round, we could just order and pay. Um, we were advised that the table would arrive in late August. Um, arrival was then delayed until October and then late October. Uh, we had lots of emails and phone calls back and forth in between times asking about um, the order, the setup, the delivery status, about content and our training expectations. Personally I was feeling very needy uh, and I only like feeling needy when I am on the couch and I want a cup of tea and a cuddle. Um, it felt very, very drawn out. Um, Reid was asking me on an almost daily basis from about mid-July um, if I had heard anything. Um, occasionally I had, but mostly I hadn't. Um, until one beautiful November day last week, uh, the call finally rang out across the workroom that our uh, Wendy, Reid, your table has arrived. We actually did run out <laughs> to the library. So um, this is our table. Um, it came in this massive coffin and we're tr it's like another table at the moment <laughs> in our workspace. Um, so to some of our staff when the table arrived, um, it was a bit mythical. They, we had been talking about it for what felt like forever. So it's really cool and fun to open it up. I did manage to scratch it. Um, uh, we, um, so it was really fun to open it up, uh, put it into place and then to fire it up. Um, and we didn't actually have any idea how to drive it, it didn't come with any instructions. Um, so the table is a 55 inch Windows um, tablet basically um, and it is definitely quite seductive. Uh, my technical expertise came in handy um, because I had to put the data cable in and then I had to push the giant red power button. Um, <laughs> I, there was an email that came came um, a couple of days before which had told us how to get the uh, software required downloaded. And I was like, really excited because I read it very thoroughly. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, the connection details that we were given by IT were incorrect and our little project is not a high priority um, within the scheme of things at Council. If you're at Wellington City Council, Porirua, Wellington Water, you'll all know what we're talking about. Um, so we will have to wait to get it connected. Um, we can view Recollect on there, which is a really great start, but what we're really lusting after is the digital exhibition platform, which Reid is going to talk a bit about. Cool. So. Um, okay, so uh, as Wendy explained, my primary responsibility for this project was to provide the content for our digital, uh, for our digital heritage table. And my first thoughts were that I didn't want it to end up being just some kind of glorified oversized tablet for viewing Recollect. Uh, instead, I felt it was important that we had specially curated content of its own that was continually refreshed uh, and that presented local history stories in an engaging, immersive way. Uh, I was very much aware that other cultural heritage institutions had used similar kinds of digital touch devices to create fantastic displays uh, that I'd seen and enjoyed at various locations uh, throughout the country. So I knew that there were heaps of cool out there, ideas out there for um, me to steal from. Um, but yeah, I was likewise aware that most of these institutions were generally much larger and better resourced than we were with specialist curators and digital technicians. Um, still, I thought that made for an interesting challenge and one that might address the question, use, uh, usefully address the question of whether this kind of digital display technology was transferable to smaller scale institutions like ourselves uh, or whether it required a certain underlying layer of uh, organizational infrastructure in order to prove effective. 
Um, now, one thing we've always prided ourselves on was our heritage program at Upper Hutt is striving to be as ambitious as we can within the narrow limits of our resources. And I think one of the keys to pulling off major projects for small regional libraries like ours is to make the most of the one big advantage you have, which is your closeness to your local community. Uh, according my, accordingly, my plan at all is being to involve our community as much as possible in the process of creating our heritage table displays, uh, to give them the sense of investment of the project, project and not just treat them as end recipients. And I had some ideas here that I'll just skip over now because we don't have time, but that was always the plan, to get the community very involved, make it a collaborative project. Um, but of course, this kind of participatory uh, organic approach takes time. Even with our original plan, when we thought the table was going to, we were getting the table in August, and we were hoping to publicly launch it in uh, late October during Wellington Regional Heritage Month, I felt that time was uh, tight. Uh, as things went on, though, and after delay, after delay, after delay, in which we've been told to expect the table or at least some training, uh, the prospect of having larger community involvement uh, just got slimmer and slimmer. Uh, and it appeared it wasn't going to happen, at least in time for this paper. Um, for me, this was a hugely frustrating experience. The problem some, wasn't so much not having the table itself, but n never having had so much of a glimpse of its back end. Uh, I basically had no idea how it worked, what things would look like on it, and what it could or couldn't do. Uh, in retrospect, there probably were ways, uh, more ways, I could, more things I could have done by way of preparing content in advance, but it's hard to keep momentum going with so little information. Uh, and given that I also had heaps of other work to do, it seemed best just, just to wait until the promised training, which always seemed just around the corner, finally came. Um, I still did, as Wendy said, kept on haranguing her, uh, unfortunately, uh, to see if she could at least get me something that I could start with. But um, you know, her efforts sadly came to naught. Um, so um, yeah, however, at the end of October, uh, we did get a message, finally, from them that said, hey, good news. Your table's absolutely, definitely on its way. Uh, and um, oh, and um, by the way, could you send us over some exhibitions so we could upload these onto the table so they're ready for you when it arrives? And I'm like, my voice going up several oct octaves. Exhibitions? What? You know? I mean, what the hell did they think I've been asking for all these months? But for information so I could get on with this. Uh, I don't know what happened there. And. A lot of the blame could be on us, not making our, our needs well known enough or whatever, but I thought we were being pretty persistent. But anyway, uh, I figure I just may as well get on with it. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been frantically throwing, trying to throw some basic inter uh, displays together. I sent them over, you know, just everybody loves aerial maps, and I thought they'd look great on the table. I'm assuming the table has a kind of pan and zoom function. I don't know how this works. I'm assuming I can also put tags on it to identify features, but again, I don't know. Uh, the other exhibition we're quickly throwing together uses this lovely uh, map made for troops at Trentham Camp for maneuvers back in 1915. Um, we've got a, a series, the idea is, you know, we've got these, you know, that people could touch various points and a photo will come up, uh, a heritage photo from the early 20th century of what Upper Hutt looked like at that time and what things were going on. Um, I emailed them several times saying, here's what I'm trying to do. How does this work? Because I, I don't even know what the touch points look like, how the images appear in relation to the text, none of those details. Uh, but um, yeah, they. Um, I, so I've just ended up throwing heaps of instructions at them, uh, lots of material, and hopefully touch wood next week or the week after, we'll get something up that looks OK. Um, so I have to say, though, that you know, now that we've got the table, I am feeling a lot more positive about things, uh, despite all the frustrations and setbacks we got through. Hell, even if it does just end up being a glorified iPad for looking at Recollect, it's still pretty cool. But I'm hoping it could be something a lot better. Uh, and um, I, I think it's got a potential to be a really great asset for us. Uh, so yeah, for the time being, at least, I'm optimistic that this particular seduction story might still have a happy ending.
Okay, so um, I feel like I need to put it out there that uh, Reed's already kind of mentioned it, but I feel like a lot of what has happened to us through this process has mostly been on us. We are librarians and archivists. I'm not, I don't know that I really classify myself as a librarian most days, but we don't go around purchasing big pieces, pieces of kit on the daily. Um, we have had so much else on our plate in the last two years, so this project has really seemed insignificant at times. Um, the next bit I'm about to say is probably a bit more personal than it needs to be, but doing and then not doing and then doing this presentation has allowed a lot of different stuff to bubble to the top. So what we really wanted or expected was we uh, really wanted our hands held and gently caressed through this process. We wanted paperwork and specifications for the physical device and the operating systems. We wanted to be able to access digital templates for exhibition layouts just to get us started. We wouldn't have cared if we looked like anyone else. We just wanted to have stuff out and ready to go. Um, we wanted access to the CMS to learn and play so that we could hit the ground running and that the table would not sit out the back for months while we created and learnt stuff. Not that there is any room for it in our workroom anyway. Um, and we wanted to know what was going on without having to chase as hard as we did. So yes, we definitely could have done things differently. Um, we often Often have so much going on it's hard to focus on a project that has become as drawn out as this one. Um, my very basic man project management education says something along the lines of a good project is one where stuff happens and happens at a good pace and I would not say this has happened at a good pace. Um, I'm sure there's probably, I'm not sure that there was a way to rein it in um, except perhaps clearer communication expect expectations on our part, and we both acknowledge that. Um, so next time, besides letting someone else project manage, um, I'm going to be clearer with our wants and needs, so much clearer. Um, so we, me, should have probably made a proper little project planned. It did feel like we would. it would be as simple as ordering, paying, getting some stuff, um, documentation, whatever. The table would turn up and everyone would be super into it. We weren't monitored by management, which is both excellent and terrible. Obvious faith in our abilities. Um, but at the same time, we weren't really held to account for what we were up to. Um, and we did re I did report on it at every leadership meeting that we had, but we didn't really have anything to say except for, yes, I have emailed for an update, or it's coming in August, I mean October. Um, so we, me, should have pushed more uh, with what we expected to see. Um, so being a pushy nag is not my natural state, um, although my 14 year old will disagree. Uh, making demands of busy people was not one of my most favourite activities. And it actually all seems like a bit too much work to kick up a fuss and then have to repair a relationship. Um, I, this is very me. Um, I always had an idea about how the conversations should go and I often didn't include Reed in them as much as I should have because I knew they needed to be bigger picture at Oh, sorry. At that end of the at that end of the project, um, whereas I knew that need would uh, Reed would end up on the nitty gritty. Um, I felt, and I'm really sorry, Reed. He knows this. <laughs> um, I felt that there would be a time and a place for conversations like that, and we are having training on Friday, so I'm fully prepared for nitty gritty. Um, so. Um, <laughs> Reid and I have worked together for a number of years in the same team working alongside each other in the library. Um, I'll often assist in te with technology help for heritage stuff where I can and I am only too happy to share my local upper hut knowledge with Reid and kick his butt at five minute quiz every, every now and then. Um, so working with Reid has reminded me that not everyone is as chill as me. Um, I'm so chill. Uh, Reid is very, very considered in his approach and likes to do things properly and I'm a little bit rip shit and bust. And chill. Um, we both have um, ha both have a lot on our plate. Read mo so more so than me. He has taken on a new role within the library, um, and I just spend my time going to conferences and morning teas and chatting really loudly to customers in the library, uh, or, and occasionally breaking technology. Um, I had a very unrealistic expectation that Reed would produce or repurpose content for an exhibition on a table that he had no idea what would look like. None of us did. Um, I had faith that he could do it, and he has, uh, mostly I think. <laughs> um, but it was a really, really rough expectation, and he knows that I'm sorry for that too. So um, uh, just to finish up, I feel with a I love historical romances, they're my favourite. I feel like that we had entered into this as very naive waves um, and we are still a little weary, um, still sort of waiting for that ultimate seduction and our happy ever after. <laughs> Thank you.